So I'm now recording, right? Okay. So we'll move on to uh, uh, experiment now. So previously I covered survey sampling, but now we are going to move into experiment and talk about how the idea of regression estimation can be used for uh, uh, for experiment. Okay. So here's a motivating example. So this is a very interesting uh, experiment, actually. I uh, very interesting. So <clears throat> somehow uh, there's a, a, a so there's an experiment, social experiment that. Uh, they are interested in estimating the effect of a support service and finance financial incentive on college students' academic achievement. Okay. So question is, if I give you, so here, a word is like uh, uh, between, uh, oops, right? Suppose you get a uh, GPA 4.0 then you will get $5,000, something like that. And then uh, if that kind of agreement, I mean, uh, you know, uh, promise is given, will this really help you to achieve the better score in the final exam, something like that. So that was a, a, a experiment done in Canada in 2005. And treatment group is that receives financial incentive and support treatment. Okay, so award of this amount for, for meeting a target GPA. And control group is receives support for treatment only. Support treatment only. Okay. And outcome. So here you can actually measure, right? You can measure the outcome, GPA. So, <clears throat> and and you have also have a high school GPA. So that may be useful, right? To because if you uh, randomly assign, it's possible that good students are assigned to the treatment group and and, and you know are not good students in, in the control group. Then it's hard to tell whether the effect is due to this treatment or due to the original nature, right? Uh, students of ability, original ability. So we want to control, okay. So control the effect of a high school GPA. Although high school GPA is not necessarily a good uh, predictor on one's uh, performance, I mean ability, but anyway, probably better than uh, doing nothing. Okay. So <clears throat> I will come back to this uh, experiment, uh, you know, data later. But this is uh, one example of doing a uh, uh, regression adjustment. So regression estimation is a popular tool for improving the efficiency of the population mean estimation in survey sample. And uh, 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 Lin was a student at uh, UC Berkeley and, and he, he uh, developed a regression estimator uh, in the complete randomized exper experiment. So his, this is his PhD thesis. And uh, his, but uh, uh, it's purely uh, design based under the purely design based framework. So it is uh, agnostic uh, uh, approach. So we'll uh, uh, basically uh, review uh, uh, Lin's his uh, his uh, a paper and then uh, move on to uh, further implication. So, okay, so this is really straightforward, right? If you're familiar with the survey sampling, then regression estimator is just a constructing prediction. So you, you can basically, uh, uh, you have uh, two parameters, right? So um, mu1 uh, is, is, is uh, so two population essentially. So that means you can actually uh, construct two regression estimator and subtract. That's it. So you you have a, a, a regression estimator for the uh, for the uh, mu one and and regression estimator for mu two, mu zero. 
And then beta one is computed from the treatment group and beta zero is computed from the control group. Okay. And then <clears throat> to make our life easy, let's just uh, assume that X is just a uh, scalar. So then uh, uh, vector X is just one and so, one should be always uh, included. And then uh, it's just a, a one and xi, okay? And then uh, regression coefficient is, uh, is, is a two dimensional vector. And that will be uh, basically this form, right? Beta zero hat plus beta hat one hat times x bar, where uh, beta hat one is a slope, right? And beta hat zero is an intercept, which is the mean, right? Beta hat zero is a y bar minus x bar, uh, x bar beta hat one, right? That is a uh, typical uh, regression, uh, simple linear regression uh, coefficient. So nothing really uh, uh, new, okay. <clears throat> one first one observation. So the, the first observation you can think of is that you uh if you regression perform a regression of y, so y is what y is a uh, uh, ti times observed yi, okay, one minus ti times yi zero, okay. So you you. You use optimal yi and regression on the uh, simple linear regression with mean adjusted x. So important thing is you should adjust by by the population mean. Okay. Then, then your beta hat, beta intercept, is exactly equal to your regression estimate. So that is a really important uh, result. So uh, the regression estimator is nothing but an intercept uh, for the mean adjusted regression. Okay. So what should we? Uh, how to prove it? Well. This is uh, easy problem, right? This is a, a really a ordinary least square. So let's uh, let's do some algebra. Y i minus beta zero minus beta one x i minus x bar, right? So <clears throat> so maybe uh well okay never mind so minus two so zero. So we need to solve this. So uh, usually, so usually you you can.
بص This is your beta one head as a function of a beta. And then you plug in. But uh, beta one, beta one is relatively easy, right? Estimating the beta one, the regression. What is the regression? What is the beta one in the regression of y one on xi minus x bar? Well, the slope does not really uh, make any difference if you just uh, subtract x by any constant, right? So it should be. So, so my point is that if you will get the same answer in terms of estimating beta hat one, right? So it doesn't really make any difference whether you use regression of yi on one and xi minus x bar or you regression, regression of y on one and xi, no difference. At least for beta hat one, right? Intercept, they will be different, but at least for the slope, you will get the same answer. So that means you can actually get this one as you answered. So we proved it, right? So this is, you, you get an answer and then you need to plug in here, right? Plug in here. That is your regression estimate. So if you plug in, Head, this is mu head one regression. So that that is the first result for the uh put so so this is the first result right if you do the regression among p equal one among the set with the treatment group you the intercept term should be your regression estimator of the uh, uh, mu one same way if you use control group, control group sample, and do the regression of uh, y linear regression, simple linear regression of y on on, on x, but uh, subtract by the uh, population mean, right, subtract by population mean, then you will get a uh, regression estimator. That is your regression estimator. So that means uh, you're right. You're uh, originally this is so <coughs> your model, right? So your model is more like this one: beta zero one plus beta one one xi. plus E, right? E, I, one, something like that. So maybe I will write here. Mm. 
no axe. Okay, so <clears throat> basically, uh, the regression model using the mean adjusted regression, right? Mean adjusted regression is this one. So this is a uh, regression model. And then we already know the regression coefficient, right? So this one is, so if I use this one, then uh, then this regression coefficient is, is a regression estimator, intercept is a regression estimator. Slope is just the slope. Okay, same way here. Same way here. The intercept is a regression estimator and slope is just the slope. So, uh, so that means we can get uh, uh, this result. And then this is the predictor of the potential outcome. And now it, it combine. So my uh, yi, my yi is a ti, yi1 plus one minus ti, yi0. So if I combine them, so that means this one, this one can go here, go to here. This one can go to here, right? Combine them. And then algebra, you can get this one. So that means this guy. So, so that means what? If you use the regression of yi on one ti, xi minus x bar and ti times xi minus x bar, then the regression coefficient corresponding to ti is indeed a, a regression estimator of the average treatment defect. So that's very convenient, right? You end of the day, you will get just this data, right? Yi, Xi, Ti. So all you have to do is just do OLS regression, Yi on this coverage, but you need to make sure that your, your Xi has been adjusted, should be been adjusted, right? Then, then you will, the regression coefficient for Xi will be automatically, uh, uh, give you the answer for, for the parameter of interest, which is the uh, average treatment effect. Okay. So, so I will, uh, so let's go back to the, our uh, motivating example. So where some data is available in the, uh, uh, R package. So we can uh, use the data in the R package and, and not this uh, uh, regression. So we can compare unadjusted regression estimator, and, I mean, uh, unadjusted estimator, <coughs> and also compare with. So remember how to get adjusted estimator, YI regression of YI on one and ti, right? And then if you regression of yi on one and ti, the coefficient for uh, ti will give you a dime. So that is the, and this is uh, another one. So uh, let me show you. Regression adjustment, okay. 
Ah, I should uh, uh, share the screen. Where is the uh, R? Uh, let me just show you this. So this is the outcome. So I will just show show the out, output of the R, R markdown. Uh, let me, I need to share the screen, I guess, right? No. Maybe this one. Can you uh can you see this screen? Yes, Professor, we can see the screen. I cannot hear. So can you see this? Can you answer? Yeah, I think we can. Okay. Okay, good. It's better to come to the class in person unless you are sick. Okay, so uh, so basically, uh, the data, right? So this is the data. Data is very simple. You have five variable. GPA zero. GPA zero is your high school GPA. Uh, this is the treatment. This is control and GPA in year one and GPA in year two. Okay. I don't understand why students have a so poor GPA. I mean, 1.10. <laughs> I don't know. Should be better than that. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so on just did analysis. If, if you, uh, so basically, you this is y right year one gpa is y and as s f s p is is a treatment ti so you just do the regression right uh yi on ti which is an unjust regression then the regression coefficient here estimate is this one and this is the standard error okay so, so then, uh, and T value is not really significant. So, so the, uh, in the paper, actually they have uh, two different results. So if you, female students have a significant effect. So females are really, uh, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> money sensitive. They, uh, <laughs> they care about money. So, so the incentive, uh, has an effect uh, in the at least for the short term, but male <laughs> don't care. So they, uh, even though they uh, they can get like uh, you know three thousand dollar for for a good GPA, they they don't care. I guess maybe that's for the first year student. Uh, those that I thought that's quite interesting. And regression adjustment analysis, you can see that this is the Y right regression of Y. On, so this is uh, including the interaction. But uh, look at this. This is uh, GPA adjusted, right? GPA zero adjusted means I have a, this is a high school GPA, and then subtract by the mean. Okay, so I want to make make it mean adjusted, and then I use the uh, once you have a mean adjusted, I I have a regression with the uh, interaction, including the interaction. So, so that's, and then the coefficient here, right? So, so that is actually quite surprising because even though they are not really significant, right? And they are not really significant, but uh, look at the sign, negative. So that means what? So it gives a negative effect. <laughs> Supposed to be positive, right? I mean, <laughs> why get a negative, right? That's a little bit strange. But anyway, one thing I like to uh, I like to emphasize is that you get the standard if you compare the standard error here, right? One point. Uh, so this is point one four five. 
which is uh, smaller than the uh, standard error here. One, it's not really a lot, but uh, still smaller, right? So which makes sense because regression is Twitter uh, supposed to improve. So I thought that is kind of in, uh, quite interesting uh, uh, real data example. So if you're interested, you can uh, check further. Let's uh, move on to our slide. Okay. So covariate balancing. Okay. So one. Uh, in some example, we call it calibration. But in the in the causal inference, we usually call it covariate balancing. So, but they are essentially the same. So sometimes you know different areas have different names for the same concept. That's not really uh, surprising. That's very common uh, because they, they have their own development, I guess. So, so this is basically uh, um, another way of writing the uh, regression estimator. You, you can write regression estimator as a, as a linear estimator, then linear estimate the weight, right? The weight in the linear regression is, uh, linear estimator has this uh, specific form. And then, so omega one is for the treatment group, weight for the treatment group. Omega zero is the weight regression weight for the control group, right? Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, and then, uh, one property is one important property is that degradation is made satisfy this uh, uh, covariate balancing property or uh, calibration property. So, so let's check the first one only. So, ti omega one i x i apply. Let's prove it this way. This guy, so the, we can call it x bar, right? X bar n, and we can call it m x x one inverse x i. Okay, so x bar n prime m hat x x one inverse x i x i prime. So that is x bar prime m hat x x one inverse summation over t i x i x i prime, and this guy can be is called, is defined to be x x hat one. So we have a cancellation. Okay, so that means we have x bar n. So that proves this relationship. Okay. So you can check this one too. In fact, this regression weight is a solution to this uh, optimization problem. So we, this is actually you can write it you can write it as a uh, omega one plus q two q zero omega zero right so so let's separate solve it separately because they are totally uh, independent to each other so minimize so uh, okay uh, maybe I can q one omega one is, is this one?
So minimize. This one subject to. Equal to x bar. So that's what you want to solve. So uh, I guess we use Lagrange multiplier, right? Lagrange. So that means we, we can kind of uh, write it. So, uh, so means that we solving this. So, large multiplication says that the above constraint optimization problem can be uh, solved by solving this unconstrained uh, optimization problem, right? So this is uh, so we need to solve this uh, unconstrained. So, so first one is a constrained, right? We have a constraint, constrained, you know, optimization. But this one is unconstrained. Optimization. So you that means you need to maximize, find the maximum of Q and uh, right. So <clears throat> so that is uh, first so let's write it is to make our life easy. Uh that means we uh, we have a ti omega one i plus lambda prime ti omega x i. So, so this is basically the, uh, and we need to solve it, right? So, so that means, uh, t because. We are talking about the uh, uh, weight for t equal one, so we don't have to worry about uh, t. So that means this is indeed uh, minus lambda prime xi. So this and, and, and this one basically it means that it's just the constraint, nothing else. So we 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 already use this equation, so we cannot really use it again. So the only thing left is is the second equation. So we need to plug in, right? Plug in and solve for it, right? So solve, and then this becomes a linear equation for lambda. So it should be uh, relatively easy. So so that means your lambda prime will be something like minus x bar. And inverse, right? So, so this is your solution. Is plug it here and you get this. So then this one plug to here, you get your solution, right? So, so that is so. So basically, this one gives your answer, which is this one. So you can see that this guy is nothing but a, a minus lambda, Lagrange multiplier. Okay. Now, uh, This is more like algebraic uh, part. So. 
Now we are talking about uh, TGI based uh, uh, regression estimator. Okay. So So this is the definition of regression estimator. So let's first let's just consider this uh, uh, parameter mu one. Okay. So the so first part is a definition. Second part is the by the property of. Algebraic property of beta hat one, right? Beta hat one, because of the uh, beta hat one contains an intercept term. So, so then we get this. It, uh, I mean, that this one is zero. So we are basically adding zero. Okay. We can write this. And then, Difficulty, so, so when we try to investigate the property of the second, right? Second form, this is a nonlinear function over three random variables, which is uh, this guy. This is random. So over x bar one, y bar one, and beta hat one. This is why, what do we mean by random? In the complete, we are talking about completely randomized experiment, right? So completely randomized, this is like a simple number sample. So simple number sampling, this guy is a mean of X bar, right? In the treatment group, right? And for the same way, this is a mean of Y in the treatment. So they are random variable. So you uh, design in terms of uh, design, right? So because this is nonlinear, we want to linearize it. And we so we can do Taylor expansion. That's one way. Another way, if you're doing Taylor expansion many, many, many times, then you will realize that there's an easy way, which is this one. So basically, the tricky part is beta hat part. So beta hat, we you can replace the beta hat and then subset. Then you get this one. So this one is an algebraic uh, equality, right? So this one, this equivalence is just algebra, nothing else. You just uh, subtract and add the same thing. But once you write this one, this one becomes, the first one is, becomes a linear. Linear function, so linear function of x bar, y bar, and by the tag. So this one is a linear function. And then this is nonlinear, of course. Uh, but the second term is more like a nebulism. So it turns out that this is indeed the same same result that you can you obtain from Taylor's expansion. Okay. So so that means you can you can obtain this one. So you can basically you can ignore this remainder term and just use it as a linear approximation. Then this that is this one. And then if you write if you write, express the, uh, you know, this uh, leg error, legendary, right? Population legendary. Right? Then you can write, so, so you can write this part. Second term remains the same. The first term, you use the equivalence, right? You use uh, this, this result. Okay. 
and this result is uh, is so this result zero. So population residual add up to one, uh, add up to zero, uh, which is true when XI contains an interceptor. So that is is a result approximation result. Uh, so same way you can get the same thing, right? The only thing is that you change. Uh, this is a treatment group. This is a control group. But that's the, essentially the same. And then, so you have a, a two two tail expansion, right? Two linearization, and then combine them. Which is this one? So. So this guy is a mu hat one regression minus mu hat zero regression, right? So that is is basically subtracting these two. Then you can get this result. So you have a tau bar plus the this is a, the second term is what? This term is a time of EI. So that uh, that looks familiar if you remember. That is exactly the same result that we obtained uh, on the post stratification. That is not surprising because post stratification is a special case of regression estimation, right? Post stratification. So why? Because regression estimator regression estimation is for regression on general x. Uh, but post stratification, post stratification is a regression estimation with a categorical x, right? Categorical x. So if x is categorical, then regression is is actually is is a post stratification. That's it. So maybe I should do So so that is. Basically, uh, 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 this point, and then you can show that. Uh, so this is a by simple and sample, right? I mean the CRE. On the complete randomized experiment, this is a sample mean. Design is the sample mean is equal to population mean of uh, XI, population uh, mean of the uh, EI, which is equal to zero. Same way. So, so that means you, your, you, your linearization term, this guy, is, is, is a zero expectation. So uh, that means uh, tau head regression is approximately designed. Now let's talk about variance. So we talked about bias, right? So, uh, so bias is okay. What about the variance? So remember, uh, this is more tricky. We are we are only interested in the design variance, right? We have to investigate the design based uh, property. So then we have a uh, phase one uh, select of. We have a randomness from uh, uh, selecting a final population, and phase two we have a randomness from uh, from the final population. And then using the linearization, so so basically because of this, right? Because this is time. So because this is time, so we can use the formula. Uh, only difference is that we use EI instead of. Uh, why? Because <clears throat> the original time, right? This is the time without regression adjustment. So this is time. Time has this form. And so the only thing is that we, instead of a yi, 
we have EI, E1. Right? Uh, that's the main difference. Okay. So now we need to, to rigorously prove this, right? Because we, we have we know the form. So this guy is this guy. This guy, the regression is this guy. Okay, now we want to compare. So in in survey sampling context, right? In survey sampling, this was relatively easy because we had a single population, right? So remember, what a, when we try to show this, right? Uh, so so when you when you show this, we basically see that this one is one over n, one minus n minus one s e square. This guy is one one over n, one minus n minus one s y square, right? So the comparing these two, the only thing is that uh, whether we have this relationship, and and uh, in the by the property of regression expression, we always have this one, right? So so that that's also uh, that's why it's easy to solve for the. Uh, Sampling context, at least. But uh, here we have a, a something covariance, right? Uh, something like covariance. So it maybe it's not uh, really straightforward. So how to show that? Well, involves it involves some additional, uh, you know, uh, algebra. But I I have a, a proof here. So basically, you can write. Regression error term as a time estimator, while you you are this is uh, this is the uh, CRE right unadjusted. This is adjusted right. So this is a regression adjusted. So this is a regression adjusted estimator. This is no adjusted estimator. Then you have a something additional, right? So you have a time and time of E. So this is the same, but you have extra X part, right? You have X, X part because you have a, you can always write this guy. Okay. So this guy is what? YI1, right? So because you have a ti in it, you have a ti in it. This is why I one, and then this guy is x i prime p one plus e i one, right? Same way this way. This guy is y i zero x i prime p zero plus e i zero. So that means you can. This part will be called this part. This part will be called by D. Okay. And then you have a leftover. So this is your, our definition of time x prime B. So basically we have a, a you know error part and x part and then uh, parameter. So you can check all this. So basically, uh, what we are what we are doing. I guess we are doing something like this. So yeah. Regression.
Uh, let me see. Uh, migration. Oh, no. Taupa. I think. I think what what it is doing is is more like this. Right. And then variance of this guy is variance of this guy plus variance of this guy plus two plus covariance tau hat regression tau hat minus tau hat regression right and then if you can show that this is zero then if then it means implies that what implies right so that that's what we are going to uh, apply here so basically So in order to, so basically in order to show this, in order to show this, we wanted to show that this one is zero. Covariance times g. And, and I, but this covariance is indeed using the, uh, using a relationship, this relationship, Turns out that this guy is time E. This guy seems to be a time XP. So you, you need to show this. That is is this one. Basically, this. So that that is this one. Okay. So this so this guy implies this one is zero, right? So if you basically this is gold, right? This is gold. To achieve this goal, we want to show this covariance is zero. But showing this one equal to zero is equivalent to showing this one is to zero. Okay. And this one, but this one involves several component because of uh, this is essentially the difference, right? So you actually work out uh, in each component. So because time E is actually, it's like a, a E bar one minus E bar zero, right? And time, XP is a uh, X bar uh, prime P1 and minus X bar P0. So you, to compute the covariance between the two, you need to co co compute the covariance, this one and this one and this one and and this one. Oh no, this one, right? So, so that's why we have a four component. And then how to show this, by the way? So you you can basically this is a simple and dumb sampling. And so so covariance of the two terms in the simple and dumb. So this one is something like Right, but this guy is zero by the definition of the uh, EI one. 
Why? Because EI1 One, right? So this is zero. Because B1 is a top measure deviation position. So you can check all, all this, but uh so, so that is the all for today. And uh, we'll continue uh, this Thursday. Okay. Let's go.